All right, we got SCP-178 3D Specs uh, by the guys over at the Infographic Team. Um, shout out the Infographic Team, some real ones. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, go crazy. The year was 1983, and seven-year-old Andrea Bradbury was wandering the streets of Nashville, Tennessee. One of her favorite activities was to head down to the local movie theater and fantasize about the movie she'd one day be old enough to see. This fateful weekend, Andrea's local theater was playing a brand new release, Jaws 3D. What she didn't know is that this simple, innocent activity would bring little Andrea into dangerous contact with SCP-178 <laughs> and change her life forever. Jaws 3D isn't exactly a classic. It was one of the many forgettable sequels pumped out to cash in on the 3D craze of the early 1980s. People paid extra for the privilege of yo. Keep it a keep it a buck with y'all, yo. Keep 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 it a sack. Keep it a sack. When's the last time you niggas watched a movie in 3D? Bro, last time I watched a movie in 3D was Kung Fu Panda 3, and my head was hurting, bro. So I just stopped watching the movie. It wasn't even worth it. Y'all ever? Y'all said 2010, 2016. Never. Ten years ago. That was yeah. For me, it was 2016. 2007, mine was alive in Wonderland 2 when Ninja Turtles came out. Yeah, bro. I, 3D movies were never it, bro. They did not last long. Now it's like IMAX and shit. But that's like immersive sound rather than immersive, like, whatever. Of sitting in the dark with an uncomfortable pair of cardboard glasses while cheesy effects leapt out of the screen towards them. Many of the moviegoers simply threw away the cheap disposable glasses as soon as they left the theater leaving them scattered on the sidewalk outside. Seeing a pair of 3D glasses on the ground, right there for the taking, was the highlight of little Andrea's week. She may not have been old enough to see any of the movies, but she knew that a local shop sold books with images that popped out of the page with a simple pair of 3D glasses. Excited by the prospect of getting to experience 3D, Andrea grabbed a pair of glasses and ran straight for the- I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, I do the same thing. Bookstore. Later that night, she was in her bedroom, with a stereoscopic image of a ferris wheel. Andrea adjusted the glasses, and the ferris wheel really did pop right off the page. She marveled at the image coming out of the book and felt like she could almost touch it. But suddenly, a strange feeling came over her. She had the feeling that she wasn't alone. Still wearing the glasses, Andrea looked up from her book and saw it, standing in the corner of her room, something huge something monstrous at that point take the glasses off you feel me at that point take the glasses off. i don't know why you screaming with the glasses on my first reaction andrea's parents heard her like, what are you talking about bro? rushing into her room there was their little girl dead it looked like she'd been mauled to death by a wild animal but there was no sign of her killer the windows were shut tight unable to be opened from the outside it was like whatever bro don't tell me she got checked with the glasses on bro <laughs> that's so whack the creature had done this had vanished into thin air the coroner's report didn't give any other clues as to who could have done this except that whoever or whatever had murdered her it appeared to have three long and incredibly sharp claws the terrible tragedy of andrea's death rocked nashville but it never made the national papers why because the scp foundation was immediately on the case Undercover agents in the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service flagged the strange death as anomalous, and SCP field personnel arrived to do their own investigation of the crime scene. There, they quickly discovered Andrea's 3D glasses, which would eventually be classified as SCP-178. An agent looked over the glasses. There didn't seem to be anything out of the ordinary about them. Just your regular cardboard frames with blue and red. So, is there only one SCP-178, or are there multiple ones? Well, let's, let's just keep watching. A tinted film over the eyes. Because I remember seeing this in Unity. Everything about them seemed normal. So he tried. And also the Tales of Foundation video. He picked up the open book off the ground where Andrea had likely dropped it, and saw the Ferris wheel pop off the page. Nothing abnormal. <laughs> Why he gasped? He turned his head slightly. Oh, okay. He saw the Take it of off. Kind of Take it off. Thing, Take it off. Only an inch away from his own, looking over his shoulder at the book. Being a trained SCP agent, he maintained his composure and looked around the room. As he did, he saw that several other creatures were standing and watching. None of the rest of the recovery team seemed to notice the creatures, and when the agent removed SCP-178, they vanished. 
It appeared they had found whatever had caused Andrea Bradbury's death. So what? So what made them attack Andrea? Like, is it the the, the noise? Cause he was just chilling. Like they they could have easily like, you know what I mean? I don't. Glasses were immediately taken to the nearest Foundation containment site for further testing. Seeing these mysterious entities through SCP-178 may have answered one question, but it raised many others. What are these creatures? Were they real or merely illusions created by SCP-178? If they are real, are they somehow summoned by SCP-178 or simply revealed by them? There was already one death that could be tied to the glasses with some certainty. But just how dangerous were they? The SCP Foundation was about to find out. Foundation scientists devised a series of experiments, with a test chamber separated from an adjoining observation chamber by a panel of reinforced bulletproof glass. A member of D-Class personnel was placed into the test chamber, along with SCP-178. He was instructed to put on the glasses and- Yeah, that's one boy from Tell the Foundation. Remember Dr. Buck was like, put that bill on? And report back what he saw to the researchers. The D-Class followed the orders. However, when he did so, he quickly entered a state of extreme distress. He threw away the glasses and covered his eyes, screaming wildly. When ordered to compose himself and explain what he saw under threat of termination, the D-Class described a hideous creature standing close to his face, watching. When asked to elaborate, he described it as having too many eyes. After that, the D-Class refused to put the glasses back on again, despite direct orders and threats from Foundation staff. He was then removed from the test chamber and observed. Although he experienced two days of mild paranoia, after 30 total days of observation, the D-Class was found to have no lasting psychological effects. Okay. Disappointed by the meager results of the first test, the researchers had at least confirmed that they- Yeah, we have watched something like this. It was the Tales of Foundation one. ...did have an anomalous object in their possession and pressed on with experimentation. They used the same methodology again on another D-Class. She was placed into the chamber and instructed to put on SCP-178, then describe the entity she saw in great detail. When she put on the glasses, she recoiled in horror at the monster she saw staring back at her. She said that the creature was tall and bipedal, with two additional upper appendages ending in large conical protrusions. She also described the creature's head as being... <laughs> Fat ass head, bald ass head, <laughs> spit shine ass. <laughs> Smooth. When asked if the creature exhibited any kind of aggression or hostility, she said that it was completely still. It was just standing there. After a few minutes, though, the creature seemed to lose interest and began staring at the wall. The researchers were happy to learn more. So wait, how the hell did Andrea die, bro? Okay, we just keep watching. I of okay. the creature's physicality. But they still weren't confident that it wasn't just an illusion created by the glasses. They needed to engineer an interaction. For the next experiment, they decided to alter the particulars. A fractal blue and red image, in a similar style to the stereoscopic ferris wheel from the book Andrea had purchased, was fixed to one wall. Against the opposite wall, they placed a bucket containing ten standard tennis balls. This time, the D-Class, a convicted murderer and arsonist, was told he was helping to test a new 3D augmented reality project. The entities he would see, as far as he knew, were little more than digital projections. GLC gang. Though, when he actually wore SCP-178 and saw them, he commented that whoever designed them must be crazy. The researchers instructed the D-Class to pick up a tennis ball and throw it at one of the- They're other. so bugging for that. They're so bugging for that. Entities. The second he did so, Deep lacerations began appearing all over his body. The onslaught was brutal and quick, and the D-Class was dead Dang. soon after that. This confirmed to the researchers that the creatures did seem to have some level of tangible presence, and they could be extremely violent if provoked. Next, they wished to see if it was possible to have any kind of interaction with the creatures without it immediately descending into violence. To test this theory, the researchers brought a 19-year-old D-Class into the test- 19 and D class. Whoa, 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 whoa. Relaxing chamber under the same pretense of testing new 3D technology. Much like the others, she was still horrified by the appearance of the creatures, but was calmed down by the researchers. They asked her to speak to the creatures directly without exhibiting any kind of aggression. She said, Hello, weird thing. How are you today? in a somewhat bored voice. And this was all it took to sign her death warrant. She was immediately slashed to death by invisible creatures. The results seemed clear, 
Any interaction wow. whatsoever with the creatures while wearing SCP-178 was a death sentence. Like a slightly more outgoing Shy Guy. But the oh, on God. Oh, on God. Put the glasses on Shy Guy. Researchers would soon find that this anomaly had oh. even more surprises. For their next test, they brought in two subjects. One would wear SCP-178 and dictate to the other how they should interact with the creature they could not see. The results of this experiment were bloody, yet informative. Both subjects were slashed to death when the unseen D-Class interacted with one of the creatures on her companion's instructions. It appeared that anyone with sufficient knowledge of the creatures who attempts to interact with them is doomed, even if they can't directly see one of them. It was an upsetting realization for the researchers. SCP-178 may be much more dangerous than they initially imagined, and what they learn in the next experiment was even worse. Okay. They adopted the same methodology as the last for the following experiment. Two subjects, one seeing and the other interacting. Why can't they just make D-Class like kind of like the Clone Wars in, in uh, Star Wars, where they just cloned a bunch of people and use those as lab rats? I mean, but then that's even then that's still inhumane because they're conscious living human beings. So never mind. However, this time, as soon as subject number one put on the glasses, they knew that something was terribly wrong. He began panicking, stating that the entire chamber was full of the creatures, all standing and watching. The researchers undertook these experiments knowing that they didn't often turn out well for the D-Class, so they didn't seem too worried about this new development. That is, until the subject stated that they could see three more of the creatures, and they weren't in the test chamber. They were in the observation room. In fact, one of them was looking right over one of the three researchers' shoulders. Immediately, the researchers lost composure and began to panic. They were used to putting D-Class in danger. That was part of the job but they weren't prepared for this. In just moments, the observation room became a bloodbath. As Bro, literally, they, okay, so, 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 here's my problem with that. Here's my problem with that. How in the world do you know, based off the observation and test, that when you interact or when you un have an understanding of the creature's existence and you panic, you die? All you have to do is pretend like you have no idea that they're there. If niggas like, oh my god, I see them niggas over your shoulder, I'll be like, what you talking about, bro? What's over what? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I'm going home. They talking about something. Oh, man. Oh, man. Bro, come on. Tripping, bro. As the three researchers who'd been designing and performing all of the experiments were torn to pieces by creatures they couldn't see. SCP-178 had gone from being one of the more innocent-looking anomalies to one of the most mysterious and deadly. The creatures seem to be powerful, violent, and incredibly numerous. The fact that they can only be observed through 178's stereoscopic lenses and kill anyone who even attempts to interact with them makes them almost impossible to understand. It was always a tragedy when the Foundation lost good researchers, but the work must continue. And the experiments were soon restarted with increased safety measures. Of course, those didn't do much good, and after another disastrous experiment that resulted in the whole sector getting locked down, all research into SCP-178 was placed under increased scrutiny. They needed to find some way of observing the creatures without the risk of having to share space with them. The proposed solution was seeing if the SCP-178 glasses were compatible with camera technology for remote viewing. Much like all stereoscopic glasses, they found that looking through only one lens at a time was ineffective. The solution was relatively simple. A dual lens camera in a roughly similar configuration to human eyes. This, however, didn't give them the comfort or the answers they hoped for. Researchers commented, upon finally seeing the creatures, that they were even more hideous than they'd ever imagined. As they observed a victim interacting with the creatures via their new camera, they found that as soon as the creatures were interacted with in any way, they would grow three long claws and attack. And they were as fast as they were ferocious. Yeah, doing too much, bro. From the observations, there were only a few things that the Foundation now knew about them for sure. Their physical appearance, their violent nature, their enhanced physical abilities. I'm trying to figure out, what are they doing on their own dimensional plane? Like, like are they just chilling or what? It seemed like they just be there vibing. Like, what do y'all do? You feel me? And the fact they appear to be pretty much everywhere. And who knows how long they'd been here, observing us humans while we glided by them, ignorant to their presence. It's enough to make you think twice before putting on a pair of 3D glasses again. But of course, never putting on the glasses doesn't mean you're safe. Just knowing about them puts you in danger. 
They could be standing next to you right now. Don't know what you're talking about. Your shoulder as you watch Has no idea what you're talking Just about. Just remember, if you want to be safe, you can't ever let them know. I don't even know what I'm watching. After all. What is an SCP? Yeah. Because you can't see something doesn't mean it can't hurt you. Now go check out SCP-049. The I know I know I know all y'all got shook off of that. I I know all y'all got shook off of that right there. Uh, yeah, this, this was fire, bro. I have no idea what what, what is it? What's the SCP? You said one seven eight. What's that one seven eight? What's that? What's that one seven eight? I don't know what that is, bro. Shit, I don't even understand English. <laughs> I didn't get the what's that? Yo, I'm geeked off of that, bro. I'm so done, bro.